What's that sound? That is the sound of my monitor having a panic attack. What's happening is, is one of my monitors, I've got three of them here for my computer, and they're nothing special. I've had them for a very long time. And those monitors are getting old. One of them specifically, uh, I've, I think I've even had to work on it before. But it's got this really nasty eing sound coming from it, which is a strong indicator. And I, it's had some problems turning on in the first place that there is something wrong with the power supply. So what I like to do in this video is just to do some diagnostics and explore. Here's my theory. There's a problem with the power supply. Let's see if I'm right. Now this is an older style Hewitt Packard monitor. It's, it's old. It really is old. I don't know how old, but if I was to take a guess, I'd probably bet probably 2010. 2007, even older. You can see it right here. Yeah, I'm not zooming in. It's not gonna be easy. With this style of monitor, you don't open it up in the normal way you'd expect. There's no screws on the front, on the back, excuse me. There's no screws on the front either. So the last time I took apart one of these style of monitors, because I, I, I chose three of them all more or less of the same design, or at least very close to the same design. And I found the easiest way to get into it is to pry this up first. Once you get this up, then you can get in. And it's, uh, it's not the easiest thing to do. Not by a long shot. I'm struggling even right now getting this up. I'm gonna get the corners up first. Now I gotta say that fixing monitors, generally speaking, like to pay somebody to do it, it's generally not, not worth the money. Not even for the more expensive screens. You're better off just buying another one. But in this occasion, I'm doing it myself. And I like my monitor. I understand it quite well. I know what it's all about. So, I like to stick with what I know. I also like to fix stuff. Why you throw something out if it's... If you know that the part probably is just a capacitor. And I'm pretty sure it's just a capacitor. So that's up. This is kind of ironic. What I'm using is, is an X-clamp remover. Uh, it's, it's working pretty good right now. Nice. So how do we get into this at this point? Well, you got to flip it over, I'm pretty sure. And then the whole, the whole back shell comes off. So I'm going to hold it by the corners. And let's see if it'll just drop out. It will. It's got some speakers connected, I'm pretty sure. Yes. There it is. I've disconnected that. Let's put the shell aside. And now we're on the inside. It looks like i got to unscrew the whole frame from the screen. i got a screwdriver for that. And there is also something that's just going to come right out, and it's uh, the buttons. It's just one single button at the top for the power. Another thing that I should be doing also is disconnecting the bulb. This is an LCD screen, which means that it's got um, the halogen lights instead. It's not, it's not LED bulbs. Might have to unplug this too. Do I have to unplug this too? Yes, I do. This is just for the USB ports for this screen. I don't use them. I, I tried using them. Um, it was okay. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I don't like things sticking out the side of my screen. And that's exactly where it is. It's sticking right out from the side of the screen. I'd prefer it pointing down or pointing up. And it's not doing either of those. Missing a screw. Where's the fourth screw? There's, there's three. Did I forget to unscrew one of these on this side? I did. Okay. I can't even show you this. This is, this. The, it, uh, I, I need the camera up higher. It's just not there. I can show you. It's going to be blurry though. There we go. You can see there's one place and then the other one on the bottom. And it's like that on both sides of, of the screen for this shell. Okay. The screen is loose. Did that actually help me any? Now well, there's two screws on the bottom, right around the plug. And then will the whole thing come up now? Oh, another two. 
Those are the, for the halogen bulbs, what are we going to call them? Oh, something's connected. What's connected? Okay. Yeah, I know what that is. It's this. It's the connector for the whole screen. If this breaks, I will just have to get a new screen. <laughs> oh, don't break. Please don't break. This is the, the least repairable screen that I've ever worked on. Usually they come out from the, from, from the back. This whole plate comes off on its own. You don't usually have to disconnect the whole panel. But this one, I, I have to disconnect the panel to get to the innards. It's very annoying. There. Okay. Got it. I can put the monitor, the screen itself aside now. So this is where we're, where, what, what we're looking for. It's this. This right here is the controller for the screen, but I'm pretty sure it is the power supply that's going. Four screws. Are we loose? Feels like we're loose. Got cables all over the back. Is it just the one? Can I pull it out or is it soldered in? I think it's soldered in. That's annoying. Okay, well we got it flipped over. Let's see if there's anything. Do you guys see what I see? Let me zoom in. I think I can zoom in. Can I zoom in? Yes, I can zoom in. It's these two right here. They are super bloated. It's just these two capacitors. These two little guys. They are so bloated. The other ones look perfectly fine. It's just those two. Now, I gotta see whether or not I've got the values for these. It is a 1000 mic uh, microfarad and at 25 volts. Let's see if I have them. I'm not going to take them out if I don't have them because, I mean, the screen at this point in time still works. It just doesn't work well. I think I have some 1000 microfarad 25 volts. And even if it is not 25 volts, it's like 30 volts or 20, 50 volts. It doesn't matter. What's most important is making sure that the, the that the uh, microfarads is is correct. It cannot vary a lot from the 1,000, like maybe within 5%. So you could go maybe like, I think, you might be able to go 1,050 microfarads. And uh, the other one that's really important is you don't go below 25 volts. So that's, that's, that's what's important for capacitors. Well guys, guess what? Yeah, I'm just tossing this right here in the middle of the video. <laughs> I wrote a book. Canis Alpha. I didn't write it alone. I actually wrote it with W.K. Grayling, who has published multiple books. And this is my first official ever published book. You can find it on Amazon as well as on Audible. I do have links in the video description if you want to check those out. So here's the trailer that I made for it using various assets that I found all over the place, as well as visual effects and some really neat sound effects as well. Hope you guys like it. In a future plagued with natural disasters, criminals known as scabs raid damaged cities. Their most important rule, don't help the survivors. When one scav breaks that rule, he changes the world. Let's get back to the video. Okay, I have found myself a couple of capacitors that perfectly match them. They're a bit longer, but it doesn't matter because I've got other capacitors in here that are taller than the others. Now there's something that you got to do keep in mind is that they do have a polarity to them. You can see that side right there is the negative and that side is the positive. The same thing with these. They have a negative and a positive. We can see all of them, it looks like most of them point to the right of this board. So we can kind of use those as a reference. Is this one itself? I bet this one I replaced previously. This one right here, I think I've replaced. And with the exact same model as this one, which is pretty cool. That one still is perfectly fine, which is nice. I'm going to turn it over and let's see if I can mark out where those capacitors are. Looks like one is right here and one is right here. Ah, I think I replaced these two as well at one point. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to put down a little bit of flux. Let's 
let's get to uh, desoldering them. They come out so easily. That one's already out. See? Next. I really should have my vent on. It doesn't stink, but my vent should be on right now. Even if it's not pointed directly at me, it, it's better than nothing. Let me see if I can turn it towards myself. There, that's better-ish. I'm gonna clean out those holes now. Let's put a little bit of solder on my tip just so that it's got something to work for, with for heat. We have it. I'm gonna give it a bit of scrub, just clean it up some. See? Look how brown that is. That all came from that, this little area here. Okay, next. Where did my capacitors go? Here they are. Let's flip it back over. Find those spots. It even shows right here that's positive, that's negative, so you really know which directions these are supposed to be going in. There we go. Flip it over. See it wiggling? Yep, there we go. Um, this isn't going to work. I need my soldering iron in hand. <laughs> I just want to get a little bit of solder at least on one of the joints. Remember that this one's the one, this one's wiggling around. Touch it. There we go. The other one's not going to work, but the other one's solidly in there. These are salvaged. I salvaged these caps from I don't remember what. Probably a DVD player or, or something like that. Let's get the next one in. Didn't even need any flux for that. Okay, there's the next one. Very good. That's it. Now, is that the only problem? Uh, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that bloated caps are the number one cause of that screeching noise. I have found that a bad coil, I can't remember the term for the, what, what that coil is called, but commonly coil wine or a coil that it's on its way out, I didn't even know that was possible for a coil to be on its way out. You think that it wouldn't be because it's just a big mass of copper, cop, the coil, coil, the copper of coil, copper of coil, coil of copper, I get my words in correctly somehow. That's all it is, so how could it possibly go bad? And yet, it can. Okay, let's, let's get this back in place. Just a matter of getting this line back up, put it back in. Make sure there's no cables in my way. I'm not gonna pinch anything. I think it's lined up well, yep, all right. Let's get those screws back in place. I'm going to start off with the one that has the washer. I'm just going to go from there. Yeah. Okay, that's done and dusted for this bit. I need to put the screen down first. I'm just gonna see if I can put this up here. I've got controllers and other stuff that I've kind of been uh, neglecting, to put it the least. I've got like a Sega Genesis over there. It's working, it just needs to be clean. I fully tested it and it's nice. It's just, just need to clean it. I really should do that. <laughs> I could make some decent coin off of it. I've got a couple of them. A couple, I've got three of them. All of which just need testing. This thing's upside down, that doesn't help anybody. Um, very careful. Careful. There we go. You're not gonna be able to see this bit. But I'm reconnecting this cable here, back into the screen. Very good. Now I gotta feed these cables the uh, cables for the lights back up through these holes. 
same thing with this little guy. There. Okay, we're in business. Let's get this screwed all back together. It's going back. This is going a little bit faster than I expected. I'm quite pleased with this. Okay, I got it all back into its housing. Just have to put it back into the shell. But before I do that, there's cables that I've got to reconnect. Um, I'm just going to lay it carefully across here. It's just the cables for the for the for the lights. There we go. And then this over here. Okay, very good. Now I just need to plug in the what are they? Is it the speakers? This speakers and the front panel. It's right. Right here. Right here. Oh how difficult is this gonna be? Yeah, I'm gonna put this on its side. Not as, I mean it down and then I'm gonna do this the other way. This is this is getting annoying. Just like this. And I can go in like this. Other way. And theoretically this will make it easier. The inside of this is a little dusty, but eh. Whatever. There we go. That worked. Now I can put this downward, down facing proper. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, we got two screws left. Yeah, where are they? There's two screws. Oh, there they are. These are for uh, holding in the, um, the power, the, the thing around the power supply. That's done and dusted. Is it in place? I'm not really sure yet, to be honest. Let's just see. We'll flip it over and see if it's sitting flat. It looks like it's properly in there. I just got to get this into its its spot. This right here, just behind the power button. That's clicking properly now. This goes in, and we can call her done. Very good. Okay, let's test it. Well, how about that? There we have it. The display is good, it's on, it's happy. Let's say it's not the proper size right now, but that's the computer, not the monitor's fault. So, I guess we're good to go. This is, this is, this is working, this is working, this is working well. So that's all there is to this video, guys. If you guys like the video, please do leave a like, and if you want to see more of my stuff, subscribe. We'll see you guys all in another video. Bye.